Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hello and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be painting another landscape painting because I just love I just love landscape paintings, as you already know. Or if you're new to my channel, hello, I love landscape paintings. So today I decided to paint some uh, uh, mountains and lakes and trees, and the colors that we'll be using are I believe. Um, are available to most of us so you will not stress about getting the colors that I'm using I will not be using weird colors today so I'll be linking in the description box below the reference image for this painting tutorial and let's proceed now again let me tell you the colors first before we proceed to the painting tutorial proper so we have here green oxide we have your black mid yellow or cadmium yellow you can use that phthalo green burnt sienna phthalo blue and titanium white you see guys as i told you the colors are quite familiar to you or to most of you already so i'm gonna underpaint first my canvas paper i'm using a canvas paper and i've taped the sides although i'm using some washi tape they're not that sticky that's why after painting when i remove the tape it's not really like sharp you know the lines are not really sharp uh, i mean the margins but it's all right i mean i can manage so for the underpainting of the water let me identify first where the water line or yeah where the water line is gonna go so i'm gonna use my phthalo blue okay and it's like half of my canvas paper uh, all right right here okay Just make a line like that. Okay. Like that. Okay. I think that's straight enough. And then I'm going to continue. Okay. As you can see, I'm using water down blue. I'm getting my phthalo green. Okay. I'm also using more, I mean, a lot of water here. I'm going to apply the phthalo green right here. Okay, like that and then I'm gonna get my cadmium or mid yellow okay I'm gonna mix it with white so I'm getting white and yellow all at the same time in one um, brush stroke okay so I'm just spreading it horizontally on my canvas paper And we will be doing some more highlights later. For now, let's just do this step. Okay, I'm trying to be careful with the tape because I want it to be clean. Alright, like that. And I'm going to allow that to dry. Okay. Now I'm gonna get my white, okay? Just spear white and apply it right here to make the foreground more um, more light. All right, like that. Okay, I'll be adding some yellow. In some areas just hints of yellow here and there okay like that okay I'll, I'll be getting my phthalo green because I feel like I've removed the green color like that and I'll be getting my blue again just to sharpen the edge of the most distant water like that okay so that's pretty nice I'm just gonna blend blend a little yep that's basically our water so any imperfections will be corrected later if the line is quite um, I feel like it's not that straight I feel like this is quite high so I'm just gonna level it a bit All 
Okay, just to be, yeah. Right, okay, that's better. All right, now that we've done the water part, we're gonna allow that first to dry and we'll move on to the Rocky Mountains. And uh, it's also one of my favorites, you know, painting some rocks and mountains because we will be using our palette knife today to create textures. So for the mountain, I'm just gonna sketch first the subject. So I'm gonna use my small square brush for that and I'll be using some black, okay? Right, there's a green, there's some green paint. So I'm gonna use my black and let's just go and identify where the mountains or the rocks are gonna go. So it should be right here. Okay, like that. Actually, you can do whatever you want. I will be teaching you how to do some textured mountains but you can style your mountains whatever way you want it and then i'm just gonna go spread some black paint you can actually use a bigger paint brush for this okay i'm just gonna use a bigger paint brush so that we get things done quite quickly like that so just underpaint this first with some black color doesn't matter what direction you go as long as you get it covered because we'll be painting over it anyway so it doesn't really matter you can see me going round and even going horizontal diagonal vertical doesn't really matter just cover the space for the rocks Okay, again, I'm trying to be careful with the tape. Right, like that. Okay. And then I'm going to continue that along the waterline. Just like that. I'm not really concerned about this one because we'll be doing some lighter colored mountains right here. Um, and it will be covered with foliage anyway, so I'm not really focusing on that too much. Right, like that I think this is a good um, that's enough coverage for the rocks so we can now proceed to detailing it we will be using our palette knife for detailing make your rocks look uneven so I'm gonna continue the mountain okay right here but then again as I was telling you guys this will be light colored mountains and it will be covered with foliage but for purposes of continuity, we have to like identify where it, where it runs, okay? It runs up to here and covering using um, some foliage um, or painting over it with some foliage later. We'll just cover that area. Okay, so that's uh, enough for now uh, for underpainting the rocks. We can now proceed to detailing it. I'm gonna use my palette knife and I'm gonna try to create the texture already using the palette knife. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm just gonna go for it. So I have here my black. So I'm gonna go for white, okay. I'm gonna mix it with a tiny bit of black to make some gray color. I'm gonna get my burnt sienna, mix it with those colors. So it's like light brown, muted light brown color, like this. And I'm gonna use the back of my palette knife to create some textures. If you're not new to painting, you probably know how to use a palette knife. But if you're new to painting, you can use the palette knife, the back of it, the side of it, and even the point of it. So for texture um, making uh, on rocks, I'm just gonna use the back of the palette knife. And I'm just gonna go like this, okay, like that. And I'm gonna apply it here 
as I told you, it will be light colored rocks. Like right here, I mean, sorry. So in applying textures um, on rocks, you can go sideways, vertical, horizontal, diagonal. Okay, just like that. And then now I'm gonna get some light gray color. I have some green here, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna apply some light brown. So it's like gray color. And I'm just gonna use that to create more gray colors in certain areas like this so I'm just applying some gray colors I'm so excited to finish this one <laughs> I'm always excited to finish my painting so we're gonna leave our palette knife alone for now and then let's get our small square brush I'm just gonna add some tiny details right so I'm gonna get some green I'm gonna get my phthalo green I'm gonna add some black to kind of mute the color all right you can add some brown if you really want it muted I don't want to use the green oxide just yet because I'll be using the green oxide for the foliage. So I'm going to add some green spots on the rocks. This will suggest the, the plants and the trees um, that are on the rocks. On the rocks? Is that? <laughs> it's like a, on the rocks. I don't I don't know if that's the correct term for that okay, even up here okay I'm gonna add some tiny bit of yellow to that muted green color just to add some highlights that are not super in your face highlights We just kind of want to suggest some sort of like um, molds or trees from afar. They're not really molds. Uh, some of them are molds, but not of them. Not all of them. Okay. These are just mere suggestions. like that oh my gosh i love this already and we ha we are not yet even 50 percent done okay i'm just so excited okay wash your brush out i'm gonna wash my brush out <laughs> all right now i'm gonna continue finishing that um uh what do you call this uh rock or light colored rock i'm gonna get my clear white and i'm just gonna try to apply some white colors here and there okay even on this area try to highlight some areas giving it dimension Okay, like that. I'm gonna wash my brush out. Now let's proceed to making some foliage right here. And for the foliage, you can actually use your uh, sponge for that. You can use your old brush to create some texture. But I'm, 
I'm just gonna use my old brush as you can see it's super stiff like it's super old you can tell by the look of it that it's quite old it's quite stiff it's as stiff as I don't know uh, it's not even soft like they don't uh, they don't feel like bristles anymore they feel like some sticks just uh, bind uh, uh, like bound together all right so I'm just I'm just gonna dab on some black color to give it some depth so I'm gonna get my black again you can use your sponge you can even use your ordinary brush for this step this is just the underpainting for the foliage but then we want to give it some depth this is not the actual color of the leaves but for depth purposes I'm just gonna dab on some black paint okay like that and I'm gonna continue all the way down all the way down here so this painting is quite textured because of the foliage so I don't know if my tapping is quite disturbing but all right I think for purposes of um, speed I'm gonna get my ordinary brush just to darken the sides okay because we've already created some textures right here the sides need to be more dark and solid black the rest will be dabs of those brushes all right like that and then I'm gonna create some stems trust me guys this will make sense later for now let's just do things one by one like that you can even create the thin lines it's up to you guys I'm just gonna create some thin lines to suggest thin um, what they call that stems all right okay. all right that's it now I'm just gonna get back to my brush you see this stiff brush I'm gonna dab onto my green oxide I did not wash my brush at all I'm gonna dab on some greeny colors right here to already create that foliage look Okay, I'm gonna get my cadmium yellow and I'm gonna use that as well So I'm using alternately my phthalo green and green oxide to create this foliage. We will go back to black later just to add more depth. I'm extending it further here. I'm getting my black guys. Decide to create as volumized as possible the foliage. Again, I'm getting my black, trying to create more depth.
I'm gonna get my cadmium yellow. Like that. And then my green oxide. that's quite noisy right my brush <laughs> okay I'm gonna make some light colors on the black portion this will suggest the highlights of this area I wonder how this looks like oh my gosh it looks good but I think this needs more depth okay it's quite um, it's not that um, deep I'm gonna add some more black you might need more black paints because I really don't like the emptiness of this area so I'm gonna get more greens I'm adding more black so if you can see guys how I just you know it's like dabbing dabbing on some paints um, creating texture so I'm just getting more black because I think I'll be needing more black and I'm gonna apply it on spaces that I see because I want it to be looking so like full, full um, foliage, like a lot of volume. Okay. And then I'm going to make some like little bush right here because I kind of like the reference image. And just to balance things, you know. Why balance? Because there's already a rock here. So we don't need another set of large bush here. We only need like a tiny one just to balance things. Um, uh, like the general look of it should be balanced. I, I hope I'm making sense, guys. So I'm getting now my, um, okay, I already ran out of yellow, but I'll be getting my white, okay? I'm gonna mix that with the green so that we create some highlights, okay? I'm gonna apply that here, making some light green colors. check okay I think I really need to give it more depth all right now let's highlight some of the branches that are sticking out 
I'm gonna get some light brown color mix your brown with your white and just kind of like apply it very subtly on the branches we're not going to overdo that step because they're not so there's not so much uh, of branches that I can see still we're using black for the branches generally but I just highlighted like a one or two I'm gonna get more yellow. I already ran out of yellow. I'm gonna apply some yellow colors. I'm gonna get my brown. Oops. Going to apply some browns. Let me check this looks really nice all right so now I'm gonna go back to the water now that we're already we are already left with what is supposed to be here because we've covered some areas we can now focus on highlighting the waters because we will not be wasting our paints highlighting the waters and and then later cover it with this huge um, uh, amount of foliage right here so that's why i decided to just paint first the water the general look of the water and then on top of it the foliage and then later the highlights of the water so that you know we will not be wasting our time so i'm just gonna get my white mix it with yellow tiny bit of yellow like this so it's like light yellow and i'm gonna make some dry brushing Just be careful not to smear over your foliage. Just like that, okay? Right here. Okay, I'm already smearing over it, but doesn't really matter. I can fix that. Okay, just apply it quite slightly. Okay, now I'll be adding more white to my yellow. Let's make some highlights, okay? Remember, we're also doing some reflections, meaning what is up here should be reflected generally, okay? We don't have to be precise here, but we need to make sense out of, you know, looking at things, the way we view things. Like this. Okay. So I'm going the uh, horizontal and vertical with the reflections. Highlight the, some distant waters. 
we're gonna mix this mix this with blue to kind of highlight So we just blue and green. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush out. I kind of like this look already, it's nice right but again we have to make some reflections of what is up here down here so i'm gonna make it quite dark some areas because the rocks are being reflected not just you know the sky and the trees but the rocks actually so i'm gonna mix this is a very slight oh no no, no not slight like the reflections are very light but they should be there okay so i'm gonna get my black all right i'm gonna get my um i don't know what to get but <laughs> i'm gonna get my green okay i'm just gonna try and i'm gonna use a lot of water for this step because uh actually the reflections of the rocks are not really too much they're not like over the it's like very slight but they should be there you should not forget about okay just like that just do some horizontal uh markings like this just to let the viewer know that it's there they don't have to be actually there okay all right okay just like that it's not very overpowering reflections. Right. In here as well. Just along the waterline, just darken it a bit. Okay, I really love this one. Okay, I think our foliage are quite dry. I'm just gonna add more foliage. I'm gonna get my yellow, mix it with green oxide. Okay, the black is mixing, which is Okay, I'm gonna darken the corners of this little bush right here. Alright, like that. Okay, now I'm gonna highlight, okay? okay? I'm gonna highlight the rocks. I'm gonna get my white, but make sure your brush is quite clean so that when we do the highlights, I'm just going to go along the edge of the rocks and I'm kind of smearing my paint along the edge to make the rocks look lighter like that all right I'm gonna get my gray color so I'm going to get my white and tiny bit of black just to make some background color of the sky. You don't have to do this, but I feel like um, I don't like the, like the nude background of the sky. Okay. 
It should have some paints. Like that okay kind of like this I'm gonna apply some more white paints like dry brushing like that okay I'm gonna get my pure black just to go around certain areas So I'm swiping right right to left or left to right just to give it more texture. Let me check. Oh my gosh, this is so good. This is so good, guys. And yay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right. And I think I'm just going to make the lines quite sharper. All right, like that. Again, I'm just going to darken the corners just to give it like sharper edge I really don't know how it's gonna look like when I remove the tape but then I think we're done guys what do you think I think we're done this is so good and by the way I don't like the sharp highlight here so I'm gonna get some like yellow color I'm just gonna remove the sharpness of the highlight I don't like it I'm just gonna a glaze over it with some white and yellow combo and a lot of water just to remove the that um, weird sharpness of the highlights highlights should not be that sharp or should not be over the top they should be there to make your painting beautiful not to make it look weird so I'm gonna add more green right here right just like that Okay, make it softer. Okay, I'm gonna get my white. Okay, just to slightly highlight. Again, when you do the highlights, don't overdo it because it's gonna look weird. Like that. All right, let me check. Okay, yeah, that's what, this is, this is so nice, guys. So nice. Okay, I think we will remove the tape now, okay? So that you really get to see the beauty of this piece. And I'm gonna be careful. And please uh, don't expect too much about the edges. Uh, I might, I might, or I could have gone, I could have gone. Um, I probably have gone over the line because my washi tape are not, 
My washi tape is not that super sticky, so it's not really protecting like this one. But generally, I think I made a good um, picture. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Yay! Oh my gosh, this is so good. Yay! I'm gonna sign this now, guys. And I'm gonna sign, where do you think I'm gonna sign? I'm gonna sign right here. So I'm gonna use my white. And I'm gonna sign here. And that's it. We're done, guys. Yay, we're done. So I hope you enjoy this one. I hope you like this one. If you like this one, like this video. <laughs> There's a thumbs up in the right portion of your desktop or your mobile phone. Like this video. Share this with your friends. Let them know that I exist. And yes, post your uh, paintings on your Facebook or Instagram. Tag me, please, just to let me know that you also followed my tutorial. See you in my next video. Mm-hmm.